Newton's law of universal gravity, exactly what it says it is, it's universal. It applies throughout the universe. It applies on Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, on planets outside our solar system. And not only is it universal throughout the solar system and the universe, it applies to all objects within every solar system. For example, baseballs and golf balls and people and pens and paper and tables. All objects exert a gravitational force on all other objects everywhere in the universe. So the most common application is between like the Earth and the Sun. They exert a gravitational force on each other. They pull on each other with equal and opposite forces according to Newton's third law. But also a baseball has a gravitational interaction with the moon. <clears throat> Excuse me, the moon pulls on a, on a baseball and a baseball here on Earth pulls on the moon. They pull equally on each other. The force is very small because we're so far from the moon. The Earth pulls on a baseball, baseball pulls on the Earth. Any two objects you can name anywhere exert a gravitational force on each other. Essentially, as you'll see in the next unit, everything has a gravitational field. Everything has gravity. Anything that has mass has some gravitational aspect. Now, mathematically, this law was discovered by Isaac Newton. The force of gravity between any two objects, sometimes we call it F sub G, force of gravity, is capital G times mass number one times mass number two, the product of the masses, divided by their distance squared. And the distance, D, some, some equations will use an R, I have a D here, D is the distance between the object's centers, their centers of gravity, center to center, center to center. When I say center to center, I mean center of gravity to center of gravity. You can see the picture here. We have mass number one, mass number two. Could be two planets. Most of the time we're talking about planets here. But we're not talking about surface to surface. We're talking about center to center. And big G here is a gravitational constant. It's a universal gravitational constant that applies, once again, everywhere on Mars and Venus. So the Venetians use that. The Martians use that number. They might use different units, but they use that number. It applies everywhere, not just on the Earth. Now, this is big G, not little g. Little g is usually reserved for the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the planet Earth. Another thing, besides the fact that this law is universal, is that it is a, an inverse square law. In other words, the force of gravity varies inversely with the square of the distance. As the distance goes up, in other words, the force goes down. The separation distance increases, the force decreases according to the square of the distance. In other words, for example, if you double the distance between any two objects, their gravitational force decreases by a factor of four, because two squared is four. Let me give you another example. If the distance increases by a factor by three, if you triple the distance, three squared is nine, therefore the force reduces by a factor of nine. One more example. If the distance increases by a factor of five, 5 squared is 25, therefore the force goes down by a factor of 25. The force decreases rapidly as the distance increases. Let's look at one mathematical example here. So the Earth orbits the Sun because of gravity. They pull on each other. Now the smaller mass is more affected, the smaller mass here being the Earth, but they pull on each other with equal force according to Newton's third law. Because you might think that the Sun pulls harder on the Earth than the Earth pulls on the Sun, but it's the same force it just doesn't have much impact on the sun, although the sun does wobble a bit in its orbit, or it's in its, its position. It's not really orbiting the Earth. The Earth is orbiting the sun because the Earth is the smaller mass. But all the planets actually cause the sun to wobble a little bit in its position in our solar system because all these planets are pulling on the sun. But to calculate the force here, it's simply plugging into F sub G. That says F sub G equals capital G mass number one, mass sub one, times mass sub two over the distance squared. And once again, the masses need to be in kilograms, which they are in this particular case. The force will come out in standard units, newtons, as I had labeled on the previous page. But we'll just plug in here, F sub G equals capital G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. That will always be given to you in the units that were labeled there, newton meter squared per kilogram squared, but that's always standard units. Mass number one here as listed is 1.99 
times 10 to the 30th kilograms, that's the mass of the sun. I sometimes use a capital M and then a little lowercase m. A lot of published equations will just say little m sub 1 and little m sub 2. It doesn't really matter, but usually I have a one capital M and one smaller case M because there's usually one big mass and one small mass. In this case, the sun is the big mass. It doesn't really matter what order you go in here because the commutative property of multiplication says it doesn't matter what order you multiply these two numbers in or these three numbers in, you get the same result. But the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. I don't expect you to memorize that. That's given. Divided by their distance between them squared. Now, when it's published, it doesn't always say this, but it's always implied. That distance is from center to center. In this case, it's 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers, but kilometers are 10 to the 3rd meters. So this is a little tricky here. That's 10 to the 11th meters because we need this to be in meters, standard units. And don't forget to square it. Let me repeat that. 1.5 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. Kilo is three more zeros, so 8 plus 3 is 11 powers of 10, 10 to the 11th. So if you plug in here, you get F sub G equals, and you might want to pause it here and try this yourself because it's a lot of number pun punching on your calculator. It's easy to make a mistake. It's also easy to forget to square that denominator and to maybe omit some of the parentheses. Just be careful about plugging this all in. Practice this. I highly recommend that. It comes out in this case that the force of attraction between the Earth and the Sun is 3.5 times 10 to the 22nd Newtons. They both pull on each other with that force. It's a big enough force to keep the Earth in orbit. It's a big enough force to make the Sun wobble a little bit, but no significant movement on the part of the Sun. Let's do another example. So now we want to calculate the force of gravity between the Earth and a, and a person. Here's a diagram that's obviously not to scale. The Earth pulls on the person, the person pulls on the Earth. They pull on each other. Once again, equal and opposite forces according to Newton's third law. I'll draw this. So the person is pulling the Earth upward, although it doesn't really make much difference to the Earth. It won't make the Earth move upward because the Earth has such a big mass. But the Earth pulls downward on the person, F sub G, and that was substantial enough on the person that will cause you to accelerate downward if you jumped up in the air. It would cause you to accelerate downward at a rate of negative... 9.81 meters per second per second because of that force and your small mass. But here we're just calculating the force, the interactive force between the two objects. And we're just going to plug in once again and practice this. F sub G is capital G mass number one, the big mass here being the Earth, times mass number two, all divided by their distance of separation squared. Now, here's one tricky part about this one. How far are you? What is your distance from the Earth? Now, when you're standing on the Earth, the, the first gut reaction might be that your distance from, from you to the Earth is zero. You're standing on the Earth. But once again, you got to remember the distance that we're talking about here is from center to center, center of gravity to center of gravity. The center of gravity is roughly 4,000 miles below your feet. 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters is the radius of the Earth, plus your height, your center of gravity, which is by your belly button, about a meter off the ground, but if you add that meter to the 6 million meters, the radius of the Earth is 6,370,000 meters. If you add one more meter to that, it's insignificant. It's not worth adding on, or you can try it. It won't make any difference. That number is already rounded off to the tens of thousands of meters. So one more meter doesn't matter. But we'll plug in here. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. That's the capital G, universal gravitation constant times the mass of the Earth, 5.98, times 10 to the 24th kilograms, double check, make sure it's kilograms, which it is, times your mass, or the person's mass here, it's 75 kilograms, that's good. That's a 75, not a 25 there. Divided by your distance squared. In this case, it's already given in meters. Therefore, we have 6.37 times 10 to the 6th quantity, squared. One common mistake is to forget to square that. So I would once again hit the pause button and see if you can do this yourself and see if you come up with my answer. My answer here is 737 newtons. That's the force of gravity, the force of attraction between these two objects. In other words, the earth pulls down on this person with a force of 737 newtons, say 150-ish pounds, 
and the person pulls up on the earth with the same force, not making any difference to the earth, but making a difference to the person. Now, if you remember back, there was actually a shortcut we could have used in this problem. The shortcut, if you know, let me go back to red, you can calculate the weight by this equation. Weight equals m times g. That's the shortcut. If you are on the surface of the earth, which we are most of the time, the shortcut is to, to calculate the weight using mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the weight here of this person, we could have taken this shortcut, their mass, 75, times the acceleration, which is only on the surface, 9.81 meters per second squared. If you do the computation here, this is 736 newtons. That's only if you know the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of whatever particular planet you're on. The upper equation up at the top here, the Newton's Law of Universal Gravity at the top, right, is more robust in a sense. It's more universal. You can apply it anywhere, anytime between any two objects. This W equals mg is only if you specifically know the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of that particular planet. So it's a little bit more restrictive. It's a lot faster, though. It gives you the same answer, essentially. All right, one more example problem. Here we have two objects. We don't really know what they are. Let's just say they're two balls or two planets. Actually, they're two planets because they're, they're quite a ways apart. They're two planets pulling on each other. So you could draw it like this. You don't have to draw this diagram. They pull equally on each other. Even though one planet's bigger by quite a bit, about a 1,000 times bigger if you look at the exponents there, 10 to the 12th versus 10 to the 9th. But they pull on each other F sub G, force of gravity. I'm just going to plug in once again F sub G equals capital G, mass number 1, mass number 2, over their separation, separation distance squared. That's what we don't know in this case. We do know that the force in this case is 6.8 times 10 squared. That's 680, but I'll write it down in scientific notation. 6.8 times 10 squared equals g, which is 6.67 times 10 to negative 11th, times mass number 1, in this case 4.5, 4.5 times 10 to the 12th kilograms times the other mass, 7.2 times 10 to the 9th. Sorry about that. My uh, pen here isn't working too well. Divided by d squared. So the one thing I don't know right now is d, d squared. I'm looking for d. Anyway, what you'll do here is move things around mathematically, move the d squared to the left side, it goes to the top, move the 6.8 to the right side, basically they switch places. The 6.8 times 10 squared switches place with the d squared using the rules of algebra equals the 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the 4.5 times 10 to the 12th kilograms times the 7.2 times 10 to the 9th kilograms divided by 6.8 times 10 squared. Once again, that's just 680. All right, so if you do the math there, you end up with d squared equals 3.18 times 10 to the 9th. That's billions. That's 3 billion, basically. So if you take the square root of both sides, which is the common mistake that people forget to do, if you take the square root here, you get uh, d equals 56,000 meters for their separation distance. So that one's a little bit more work algebraically speaking. All right, so Newton's law of universal gravity, it's universal, applies to any two objects anywhere in the universe. You could calculate the force of attraction between, say, a golf ball and Pluto. They pull on each other. And it's an inverse square law. If you increase the distance, say you triple the distance between two objects, the force decreases by a factor of 3 squared or 9. So it'll be one-ninth the force it used to be. Newton's law of universal gravity.